Welcome, welcome to Let's Talk Hair, the Combed Education Podcast, or welcome back. Uh, For those of you that are new here, Combed Education is a passion project of mine. My name is Aras Nelson. I've been a colorist and a stylist for over 20 years in Southern California. I made a lot of fucking mistakes in my life, okay? Actually, more so in my career. Not so much my life. Maybe that too. Doesn't matter. The whole point is this, is I've learned a lot of shit, and I feel like as a... uh, somebody who's been in this industry for a long time, that I should share some of the things that I have learned to help avoid making mistakes for some of my other fellow hairdressers. And this podcast is one way, one contribution, one platform that I utilize to help. Um, If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe. If you can rate this podcast, or follow or like or whatever platform you're watching or listening on just to help me spread the word. That would be great. If you don't want to, that's cool too. So if you listen to last week's episode, I talked about niching down or niching down. I don't care how you say it. It's the same shit. Um, I talked about some of the pros of niching down, some of the benefits that you may experience from niching your business down. So if you didn't take a listen, go ahead and take a listen to that. But niching down would be something like this. Let's say, for example, that your niche is extensions. You are a master extension person, right? You do extensions. If you were to niche down, you would niche down to something like hand tight extensions or beaded extensions or tape in whatever. That's a niche down. If your niche is blondes, you can niche down to platinum blondes. Zach Meskwit has done this masterfully. Okay. So niching down, we talked all about the pros last time. It establishes you as an expert. It creates loyalty. It makes marketing a breeze, all of that stuff. But if you listened, I said that I don't necessarily think niching down is good. And I don't necessarily think niching down is bad. I think you have to understand all of it, the pros and the cons to it. And then you decide what's best for your business. So in my usual fashion, I just like to offer perspective. And I always say, take what works, leave what doesn't. So like I said, last week, we talked all about the benefits. Um, But there are definitely uh, pros to niching down. And there are definitely um, some cons to niching down. I have found... And you can correct me if I'm wrong, leave me a comment. But I found that the industry vets, right? The people who have been around for a while, we're a little more opposed to niching down because listen, 20 years ago, we couldn't say no to anybody who walked in. Men's haircut walked in, you're taking it. A perm walked in, you're taking it. A color correction walked in, you're taking it. A haircut that you don't know what to do and have no business doing, guess what? You're fucking taking it. So a lot of that generation of hairdressers is like, no, I'm not going to niche down. I need to continue to work and never say no to business. But like the newer greener stylists, you guys are like, fuck that. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to do perms or I don't want to do redheads. Cool. Like more power to you. But at the end of the day, I think what is most important is being open-minded to see all sides of all of the things on any topic, especially for this, right, as far as niching down, and then make a strategy based on education and the research that you have done and not based on mere opinions that you have, not based on what I say, not based on what this person says or that person says, like, listen to it all and then make an educated decision for yourself and your business because at the end of the day, you, my love, are responsible for making your business a success. Not me, not somebody else, you are. So learn from all of us and then take what works and leave what doesn't. But I will say this, very few people talk about some of the cons of niching down, especially in the hair industry. Um, One Google search about niching down and you're gonna find pages and pages and pages of why it's so beneficial for business. And yes, they're right, it is. But there are some drawbacks to it. So here's the other side, right? We're going to flip the coin. And here's some of the drawbacks uh, to niching your business down. So number one, it can turn potential clients away. So if you only do a specific look or a specific thing, this has the potential to learn potential or to turn potential clients away. Because for example, if all you talk about and all you do is extensions, then why would they even think about you if they are looking for a color service or a highlight service, right? We assume that even with our clients, so this is different, like there's the people who are watching on social media and then there's the clients that are in your chair. So I'm talking about even the clients in your chair. We assume that our clients know what we offer 
Um, but I can't tell you how many times I have had clients ask me if I do certain things because I don't talk about it or because I don't post about it. So here's another example. Let's say that there's potential client who's been watching you on social, right? They're following you. You're so cute. You're so talented. Your personality is bomb. Your salon is cute. Like they are all about you. And all you post about is like dimensional color, right? But how about if they want like a solid red? They're not going to think to reach out to you because that's not what you talk about or you post about. Again, not good, not bad, just perspective. So just something to consider, okay? Number two is that your skill set in other areas are going to weaken or diminish. So they say that repetition is the key to mastery. So oftentimes we do something repeatedly over and over again, day in and day out, we become a master at it, right? But what about all of the other skills that we have acquired, right? Or the skills that we may need to learn. So if you don't hone in on some of those other services or the other talents that you have, um, chances are you're going to get a little rusty. And then when the time comes that you may need that particular skill set, um, that you might find yourself on the struggle bus. Okay. So this leads me to my next point, which uh, number three drawback to niching down to a very specific niche is that the truth is, if you've been in the industry for longer than seven years, trends and popular looks change. We know that, right? We know that in theory, but like you will know once you've seen it firsthand that trends and what clients are asking for change over the years. So like, for example, some services that some of us never thought would ever fucking come back are making a comeback. Terms, chunky highlights, just saying, okay, just saying. So if you become, let's say, for example, a master at only balayage, only painting balayage, and you don't understand the art and placement of foil work, you're going to find yourself in a challenging situation if you've just been painting for three years and you haven't put a foil on the head. You're going to be slower. It's going to be messier. Your foils are going to slip. You're going to be in a little bit of a pickle, my love. So when you box yourself in with a particular niche of a service, inevitably, when that trend is no longer popular, then what? So to my stylist friends who've been around for a while, do you remember in the early 2000s, <laughs> all we did, all we did day in and day out pretty much were dramatic A-line cuts and chunky highlights. How challenging was it, right, for us to force ourselves to change our foiling patterns to more lived in looks or to change from foiling to going painting with balayage instead, right? All I'm saying here is just be mindful that the popular looks and the trends will change over time. So one of the drawbacks of niching down is you're going to kind of forget how to do certain things. So just make sure that you are always getting with the times and that you're not boxing yourself into your own detriment in the future. So in the short term, yes, niching down is going to create immense success, but in the long run, it does have the potential to box you in unless you have a strategy to elevate and um, kind of get with whatever is going on in the industry and with what clients are asking for. So number four drawback of niching down is it becomes very repetitious and mundane. So doing the same thing day in and day out in the beginning is very exciting. Like I talked about last week, right? Like you only get to do the services that you fucking love doing. Um, but after all, you might love it. You enjoy it. It's great. Uh, after a while, for some people, this is very, after a very short while. For other people, it might take a little bit longer, but it's going to become repetitious and mundane. Okay. Doing the same thing, the same look, the same color, the same style over and over and over and over again. Oh my God. It can get very tedious, which will lead to reducing your creativity and eventually can lead to burnout. So just be mindful of that. Like, yes, you can niche down in real life to do the things that you only love doing. But what about in six months or a year or five years? Like, you might be a little bit burnt out. 
Which leads me to my last point. And I talked about this last week too, but there is a difference in where and the strategy behind your niching down, okay? And there's niching down in, there's two ways. There's niching down in real life and then there's niching down on social media. So I think this is really what matters most because like I said last week, I think by now we all know and understand the value of social media. We understand how niching on social to attract your ideal high ticket client is essential for business growth, for positioning yourself where you want to position yourself, niching down on social, beautiful. Um, But that doesn't mean you have to niche down in real life, okay? That doesn't mean that you have to turn away uh, other services that you enjoy doing because, again, we want to think about, we don't want to get bored. We don't want to do the same shit over and over again. We don't want to get burned out. We don't want to be kind of in a box when the trends change. So you don't have to niche down in real life. Like I said, I've known plenty of stylists who are very niche specific on social because of marketing strategy. I get it, but their books are filled with all kinds of different things, right? So here's my takeaway. And again, like I said, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad. There are pros, cons, whatever. Listen to all of it and do what you want with this information. But I think it is important, in my opinion, to be very niche specific on social media and make sure that your feed is uh, like your feed, your page, your logo, your branding, your marketing, your messaging, all of that is speaking to your target demographic. I think that's important because it's going to bring you those services that you enjoy doing. But in your stories, I think is where you can showcase some of the other services that you offer. Um, And so this way, clients who are following you, clients who are watching you, potential clients see that, oh shit, she does do extensions or, oh, she does do wedding hair or, oh, she does do this service that I'm looking for. And she's not just doing X, Y, and Z. Now, if you want to just do X, Y, and Z on social media and real life, like, cool, I'm not telling you not to do you do what works for you. But I just wanted to offer a little bit of perspective. And I hope that it was insightful for you to kind of take a look at what is your strategy. Um, Don't just niche down because all the marketing gurus are telling you to. Uh, Yes, there's benefit to it. But when we're talking about the hair industry, niching down with like big business is one thing, but the hair industry is so nuanced and there's so many services that we can offer that sometimes niching yourself down too much can put you in a little tiny box and it's going to be really hard to climb out of that box. So again, I hope this was insightful. I hope this gave you a little bit of perspective. Um, Last week, I outlined the pros. This week, I'm talking about some of, I talked about some of the drawbacks. And ultimately, where do you stand on it? What do you want for your business? What do you want your days to look like? What do you want your books to look like? And then implement a strategy to get you there. Not just because I said so, or he said so, or she said so. It's because you put your thinking cap on, you looked at big picture and you figured out what you want to do to get from point A to point B. That is my only concern, or that is my only wish for anybody who listens to anything that I have to say is don't just take my word for it. There's a lot of wealthy information in this industry. Listen to it all, learn it all, take what works, leave what doesn't. With that being said, I hope this was insightful. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you next week.